Tai Chi, four common mistakes and how to fix them. Today, I'm going to be addressing the four common mistakes in Tai Chi and how and why to fix them. As an experienced Tai Chi instructor, I've observed recurring patterns among my students when they are learning Tai Chi. These mistakes are pretty easy to fix, but they often hinder the development of good posture and body mechanics, which are crucial principles of Tai Chi. By correcting these common Tai Chi errors, we can enhance the flow of Chi through our body, and we also elevate the key benefits of Tai Chi, whether you practice Tai Chi as a healing art or as a martial art. So whether you're a beginner or an advanced practitioner, understanding and addressing these common mistakes will greatly benefit your Tai Chi practice. And if you're an instructor, it will help your Tai Chi students as well. Let's get started. All right, so common error number one of um, Tai Chi posture is that people tend to hold their arms up too high. Even if you think you have your arms low, you don't. And so when we have our arms up too high, go ahead and join me. Bring your arms up and keep bringing them up just over exaggerated and then try to take a breath in. And you'll notice that your breath is up in your chest. Now simply lower your arms down to your chest level and sink your elbows. So we tend to float our elbows, sink the elbows down and take a breath. And now you'll notice that your breath very naturally is falling to your lower area. Now, what does this mean on a mechanical standpoint? What I'm gonna do is show you this with brush knee so that you can try it with a partner and you can actually feel the difference. I'm gonna be in a brush knee posture. And if I have my elbow up just a little bit, when he pushes on me, so just push on my hand there, if he pushes on me and my elbow is up, then he can easily push me over. Also, if you notice that, go ahead again, if you notice that my arm is up high and so he can push me very easily. Now, we're just talking centimeters here. Go ahead and not push yet, but let me get set up. Now, if I just drop my elbow down and I drop my arm down, can you feel that I'm in a much better mechanical advantage? And I don't know if you've noticed, but he's already starting to tilt back a little bit. And so now if he pushes, yeah. So he's, um, he can't push me. <laughs> It's like magic. If your arms are up high, even the slightest increment, and our elbows float up, then you're losing a mechanical advantage, plus you're putting your body more in a flight or fight. Um, so I, I <clears throat> really want you to try these out with a partner and just ask them to start to push gradually and add more and more, and then you'll feel the difference. Drop your elbow down and just, Make sure that your arm is not, your elbow should be below your shoulder and you're connecting. And then when he starts to push, it just goes right back into your feet. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is that we keep our joints soft. So the second error that um, typical of beginners is that they, they lock their joints. And so for example, if we're gonna do a punch, then they'll punch with their elbow rigid, okay? Everything's soft and loose, and all of your joints always soft, always bent. So you might see some people do brush knee like this, and they lock their back knee, and this is incorrect, and they also bend their wrist up like so, and that's also incorrect because we're taking it to the what's called the closed joint position. In therapy, we call that the closed joint position. It's, it's not a mechanical advantage on any level for our joints to be in closed joint position. And furthermore, I'm much easier to be pushed over. We'll do brush knee again, and this time, ugh, it's this way. I'm going to straighten my back knee and my, my wrist is up and so even though I have good posture, you know, here, if my knee is locked and my wrist is locked and he pushes me, then it just comes right back at me, okay? Now, if I soften this and 
I make my yeah, season. So already he's, he's trying to figure out how is he going to get in because my wrist is more neutral so he can't get in to even apply the force as well. Okay, and now I can absorb this into my qua and into my knee and into my softer elbow. So as he pushes, then I have a mechanical advantage. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I kind of muscled it there a little bit, but the, but the point being is that I was soft. Could you feel the difference then yes. between joints locked? Joints locked and he pushes on me, so a beginner will come in and they'll do this. And their intention is here, go ahead and push again. And see, I mean, that's all he has to do. All right, so you want to keep your joints um, nice and soft, never stiff, because the stiffness just comes right back at you, whatever force they're giving. Okay, great, thank you. The next one is the twisting. And um, I have another video, it's on postural alignment in Tai Chi, and one of my followers actually asked me to clarify on this. Um, twisting is when your shoulder qua gets away from your hip qua. We don't want to twist in Tai Chi. We want to rotate, but we don't want to twist. So if I'm rotating through the qua and my center line, or I can even put my center line out here if I want. But I'm rotating as one unit, and I keep my shoulder qua over my hip qua. Then I'm keeping a postural integrity that works for me structurally. Now, as if my shoulder gets away from my hip, so then uh, so people will do this. They'll rotate, and then they add a little bit more for a twist. Now it's very easy. Okay, can you come over? <clears throat> All right, so if I'm just rotated and he tried, now I am in a disadvantage because I'm parallel here, but let's just see what happens. Just go ahead and gently push on my chest and see, you know, how, yeah. So it's, it's not great, but it's still, that's a lot of force for me to be able to take. Now, as soon as I keep on, as soon as I then get my shoulder over my, and twist, now all he has to do is, and then he, then he's got me. Or conversely, uh, try that again. <clears throat> so just push right here on the center. That's it. As I rotate, now it just feels different, doesn't it? Okay. If I twist and I get my shoulder away, now he can come on to the other side. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <clears throat> so the twisting breaks the continuity of our structure. So if we're doing brush knee, I'll do it again. If I'm doing brush knee and I'm rotating, let's maybe if you'll go right here, right there, that's good. If I'm rotating my body, you see the upper body is just riding, gliding on top of the lower body. Now I'm rotated and I haven't broken the continuity. So if he tries to push me, Again, you can push here on my, oh, well, you can push there. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm, don't, I'm not breaking the continuity. Now, if I try to, go ahead and I'll twist now. If I twist my body, yeah, see, he felt it instantly. I mean, and he's not a Tai Chi player, so he's just sensing right away what he felt. He's felt that loss of integrity as I twisted. So if I'm coming across and I go here and then I twist my body, I mean, I have got no recourse against that. So we want to keep rotated. So maybe it's a semantic here, but this is not twisting because the qua are staying aligned. So as I'm coming in here, everything is aligned, okay? And so now as he pushes, he's just got nothing. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, but if I twist, if I try to add a little more, and there it is. Oh, that was good. I think you could really see that. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. Fourth and final mistake is, well, not the final, but for this video, is the qua. Um, I think that you can tell how good a Tai Chi player is by what's happening at their qua. But the qua, or the hip joint, is really where you can observe and see um, whether that, that person is moving in Tai Chi. Our qua is that crease uh, when you lift up your knee, for those of you that aren't familiar with the terminology. And we want to keep that down and back. 
And the most common error is that people bring it forward. So here's my coif, and you can see it's got a crease here. And then as I do my brush knee, if anything, it's going to relax down and back a little more as I deliver. What, I, what the common error is, is that people push it forward. And now this is flat and it's rigid and it's setting me up to be able to be easily uprooted. So let me get my partner back. All right, so I'm gonna just move right into brush knee and I'm gonna follow through and push my coif forward. And now as he pushes, it just comes right back at me. Now I'm going to do it correctly, whereas as I'm delivering and he pushes, I'm going to soften and receive it right into the claw. Yeah. And then I can kind of bounce that back into him. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right, so there you have it. That was kind of fun. Um, you have four of the common errors and you have a way of testing them with your partner. So number one, arms held too high, um, keep your elbows below your shoulder height. Number two, the joints, instead of being stiff here or here or in your knees, throughout your body, you want them soft and slightly bent so that you can receive the incoming force. Number three is no twisting. We want to rotate so we can rotate our body and but we keep the shoulder and our hip claw aligned. So as soon as we do this, or we end up twisting, then we lose that integrity and somebody can just push right through the center line. Plus it's just not good for your spine. And finally, number four, it's all about the claw. And so when you deliver, rather than pushing that claw forward, very common mistake, right? So like that, then instead what you want to do is just imagine it sort of melting down and back and receiving so this energy can be received into the claw or even into your whole anterior spine. So those four points. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you will go test it out with somebody. If you do, ask them to be fairly gentle with you to start off and test it. See what the difference is between your arm height or between twisting and rotating and what's happening at the quad and what's happening at your joints. So thanks for joining me. I hope you find this helpful and that it enhances your Tai Chi practice. And I really would appreciate it if you leave a comment or um, just be engaged because that helps keep me inspired and it makes me feel like um, I've made a connection and that this is a, um, a very alive form of teaching. So even if you give me a thumbs up, that helps me. Hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.